You're not going to be surprised if I tell you that smoking is really bad for us. You already know that, so what? But what if I told you that smoking causes real world disability? And for people that have multiple sclerosis, this may mean increased disability, the possibility of more frequent relapses, faster brain atrophy, which means that areas of the brain loses their neurons. But I think the biggest thing is the potential progression from relapsing remittent MS to secondary progressive MS. Just to add a couple of more into the mix, we are going to include decreased levels of vitamin D and also the likelihood of going on to get other autoimmune diseases and other health issues. However, all of this said, I don't want this video to be doom and gloom and there is going to be a positive message coming from it. Not that long ago in one of my videos I spoke about my neurology appointment that I went to and discussing with my neurologist all the potentials that could lead to progression in MS and one of the big ones that came up was smoking. I just wanted to look into this a little bit more and understand what the link was with smoking and multiple sclerosis and the progression that they suggest where it could potentially take you from relapsing remitting into secondary. Some of the experimental evidence that links smoking to the progression of MS points to a potential role of the free radical nitrate oxide. Exposure to the nitric oxide has been shown to cause axonal degeneration or block the axonal conduction especially in the axons which are already physically active or demyelinated. And so because of this elevated levels of nitrate oxide in the CSF are associated with clinical progression of multiple sclerosis. In a study which was carried out by the MS register where they actually take studies from people with multiple sclerosis, they estimated that the risk of developing multiple sclerosis with people that smoked was three times higher than those that don't smoke. So basically the findings are suggesting that cigarette smoke may hasten or transform relapsing remitting forms of the disease into secondary progressive. So the findings were put into scientific papers and it's called Brain, the journal, and that can be found in the description below. I'm gonna link it so that you can also have a read of it if you wish. The papers were reviewed by eminent researchers in the field to make sure that the research behind the work that they did was robust. It was also taken to one of the largest medical scientific research conferences in the world, ECTRIMS, and they are all about the most up-to-date and current research trends in the field of MS care. So you would really look at this and think that this is a really good scientific based um, study to go by. So I did say that there was going to be a positive message to take away from this. And the message is, is that if you stop smoking or if you can stop smoking or if you decide to stop smoking, that rate of worsening very quickly goes back to one similar to somebody who's never smoked. So that is really, really great positive news to hear, especially if you're somebody who is looking to potentially give up or wondering what the effects might be if you've been smoking for a long period of time. However, saying all this, I do know that it is not so easy just to give up something that you've been doing for years and something that is a drug and it's addictive. But from the studies that they are doing, they also confirmed from the previous findings that smokers have a moderately increased risk of developing MS in comparison to people that don't smoke. And to be honest, that is quite a bold statement. The findings were reported to be accurate and it was approved for publication and obviously now is available for anybody to read. So I will link that down below. So the main takeaway from this video is that it's never too late to quit and you can help towards real positive benefits for your MS. Take care everyone and see you very soon.